I was gathering water from a river for testing to see what levels of runoff had been like. To do this, we had to gather from several different points, so many miles away from a selected location. One of those mile markers along the river took me into a patch of woods that grew pretty dense as far as Michigan woodland goes. I was packing up the tube full of water samples when I looked up and saw something very out of place in the landscape. In the thick growth of the trees, I saw something that looked round, but not perfectly spherical, like an oversized pear suspended off the ground. I looked around, and there was nobody observing me. The rest of the team was having a coffee break as they waited for me to finish up what I was doing. So, I decided that I could steal five minutes to take a closer look at this strange object. I had to climb to a steep bank to get up to where I saw this oddity. Upon closer inspection, it looked like a gigantic gourd that had been hollowed out and mashed in with branches of the trees. It was very much in the family of a paper wasp or a mud dauber's nest, but the scale of it was ridiculous. Something that huge, the size of a military tank, had to have been constructed by something that also was big. My mind was filled with pictures of the so-called murder hornets that have been making news on and off, but I knew hornets weren't big enough to make something like that. Immediately, I was pulled from my thoughts by an eruption of something from the river down below. A figure had emerged that I would have mistaken for a crocodile any other day from a distance, but this thing was even bigger. Stranger yet, it walked on two legs and it had a very, very husky build. It caught sight of me and its tail began lashing like a cat's. I made a mental connection between its reaction and the object I was investigating. I got out my little pink taser just in case. I had no idea if it would be any good. I began backing away from the nest or whatever it was, away from the edge of the bank where the main lizard thing would surely appear. It did not disappoint. It looked every bit like an angry parent. I held my taser out and it suddenly felt very small in my hand. The creature looking much taller when it stood on the same level as I. I kept backing up slowly. My taser extended, trying to get across that I didn't want any trouble, but that I was also capable of defending myself if need be. It looked as though it were going to let me leave as it stood and stared for a very long time. But something inside of it snapped and it appeared to charge me with its mouth full, open wide. The split second of being rushed was the single most terrifying instance in my life. My taser popped and crackled and my world went blurry for half a second. The business end of the taser had done its job and for the briefest of moments, this creature had touched me, and when you tase an attacker that's touching you, you also tase yourself. The disorientation didn't last long, but the fear was still tearing through my body. So, are walking man lizards really a thing? I haven't really listened to your show before now. It's not easy being surrounded by people, but feeling so alone because you have a traumatic story to tell that nobody will believe. I signed up to be an archaeological assistant. It sounds pretty important, but all it means is that you get flown out to a remote location where everybody is so focused on digging something up that they forget about all their comforts and necessities, like a little kid that plays video games until they pee their pants. I didn't get to be directly involved in any of the digging or cataloging of the finds. I got to haul around food and water and rubble, and everything unimportant that nobody wanted in the way of more serious work. My story marks my last outing under this kind of employment. Something happened that could have been prevented, and that nobody on site even tried to do anything about. I'm not even sure they were concerned if I was alright. The dig site 
was at a recently discovered Mayan ziggurat. Don't get too excited. It wasn't very big. It's actually one of the smallest on record, and it might end up in National Geographic for two pages. But other than that, there's nothing truly remarkable about it, at least as far as the information they're willing to disclose. There was an extensive system of catacombs under. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that it was bigger underneath than it was on top. It was also very dark, and this team had not come prepared for extensive lighting, which was ridiculous, because the underground work was where most of their efforts began to take place. I'm quietly claustrophobic, and more than a little afraid of the dark. When I signed up under the impression that I'd be mostly working outside, and it's probably what they had in mind at the same time too. But, with the discovery of the catacombs underneath, my job description began to receive radical revisions. I kept getting called underground to be removing large chunks of rubble and dirt and other things that nobody else wanted to deal with. Basically a glorified pack mule. Going underground to take care of those little projects was kind of like holding my breath to go underwater to retrieve something. It was just too intense. I had to be continuously pacing myself, and this made my supervisors agitated. It was when I got called underground to a smaller chamber that took a little too long to reach. I started to become undone. The way to do this little chamber was extremely poorly lit, and I stubbed my foot hard more than once. I actually got there at some point or another, and a supervisor told me to take care of all the rocks that were in the way. We weren't allowed to use any lighting that wasn't provided, but I went ahead and used my cell phone and lit up the area. I found that the rocks I supposed to be hauling out looked nothing like rocks. They resembled eggs, most of them near the size of beach balls and encrusted with all manners of dirt and slime and other liquid I was afraid to identify. I did voice my concern and my superiors told me to just shut up and do my job. That's what the moment I should have walked out. But realistically, there was nowhere to go after this. I began hauling the eggs out in the open, above ground. I had to pace myself. The darkness was just too much, and the overall creep factor of these eggs was rather high. It was when I had carried the last of the eggs top of the ground that there was a piercing scream from the entrance. Everybody turned to see one of the archaeologists, scrambling, when something appeared to grab him from behind and drag him back in. Everybody had looked at each other, and even I could almost feel it. What they were thinking. Only one of the people on site was armed, the one designated as a security guard, which, incidentally, was a person who looked like he had never actually used a gun in his life. He did a great deal of waffling, while whatever was underneath came flying outside and mauled two or three more of us. To give it a best description, it as a crocodile would be grossly inaccurate. It had similarities, but his head was very round, and its mouth was short compared to something like a crocodile. Its body was more round, almost like you described somebody that was heavy set. The eyes were proportionately huge compared to the rest of the head. Think stereotypical aliens. Give that mental image a reptilian cast, and then you have the head structure of this thing, minus the smaller, frailer body. By the time the guard had his gun out and had the nerve to take a shot, he was already being charged and several bodies littered to the ground. I never experienced a bloodbath before in my life, but I wonder if this is anything close to how soldiers feel in combat. I can remember that the first few shots staggered it. One bullet, thankfully, hit it in its head. And surprisingly, it didn't kill it. There was a strange crunching sound. All the eggs, at least the ones around us, were beginning to crack open. I had no idea what to even do at that point. My experience with the entire situation was as fascinating as it was traumatic. 
even now, as I'm typing this up for you, all those years later, it's making me shake and shiver, and my keyboarding is suffering for it. As you might have suspected, all the evidence of the monster and what had happened was covered up, probably due to liability more than anything else. I don't think the job had any connection to the government, so it's not like there was a controlled effort to cover up the existence of the species. I don't know if this would be classified as reptilian or what. All the reptilians I've ever heard about are supposedly shape-shifting, scheming demons that are trying to, better yet, manipulate the human race. This felt more like encountering a gorilla than anything else.